in the subcostal inferior vena cave of view, we're pretty much transitioning from the four chamber view to this view. We have the patient in the supine or lying flat position. And what we want to do is take the transducer, again, it's positioned two to three centimeters below the xiphoid process, uh, directed towards the patient's left shoulder. Okay. And we want to now move it um, perpendicular. Okay. And what do I mean by that? Well, you're essentially moving and directing the marker from the three o'clock position to the 12 o'clock position. Okay, so let's take a look here. So we have our transducer positioned in the same position as we saw two to three centimeters uh, below the xiphoid process. Okay, so notice that here's our transducer, this in blue. Okay, then in the front here, you have the marker, which is that in yellow. And previously in the subcostal four chamber view, we had the marker directed this way towards three o'clock. Okay, and what we want to do is now go counterclockwise from this position, and you can see that arrow, and we're going this way towards 12 o'clock. Okay, 12, 3, imagine this is 6 and 9, so it makes a clock. So we're going from the 3 o'clock position, and we're going to rotate the transducer to the 12 o'clock position. Okay, and in doing so, we're going to look for the inferior vena cava merging into the right atrium. Okay. And this is this helps to confirm that we're not actually visualizing the aorta and, it, and we're looking at the IVC, the inferior vena cava, going into the right atrium. So you want to make sure you're keeping that right atrium in uh, view as you're making this turn. Okay, so from 3 to 12, and the depth should be able to stay about the same between 16 to 24 centimeters. Obviously, you can adjust it, but pretty much you want to go from the subcostal four chamber view that we were just in, and now you're rotating it counterclockwise towards that 12 o'clock. And in this uh, position, we want to assess the inferior vena cava, okay? This could sometimes be a good way to look for fluid status. We won't get into all that here, but this is uh, something we look for. And so you want to look at the size and the respiratory variations of the inferior vena cava. So let's look here. Notice that we're going over the liver, so you can see the liver positioned here, okay? So here's the liver. This would be the liver, okay? And we have the inferior vena cava, here it is, going into the right atrium. So the IVC goes into the right atrium. That's what we're looking at here. Now I want you to also look at this image here on the left and notice it may initially look uh, a little off, but you want to envision the transducer looking straight down the patient's belly. Okay, so looking down and the thing it's seeing initially here is the inferior vena cava as it goes into the right atrium. Okay, so it's almost um, in a position as the transducer is looking down perpendicular okay and looking for the inferior vena cava going into the right atrium so again this is the transducer this is the marker okay so transducer would be here this here in yellow is the marker and the same thing transducer and marker so we're looking for the inferior vena cava going into the right atrium okay so hopefully that makes sense so let's just recap what this position is showing us this view so this is the subcostal inferior vena cava view and we have the patient in the supine position again just like the subcostal four chamber view we have the position of the transducer two to three centimeters below that xiphoid process and what's different is we're going from that three o'clock position that we were in the four chamber view and we're going counterclockwise to the 12 o'clock position and we're looking pretty much straight down Okay, we're looking, we're keeping the right atrium in view during this time, and we're looking for the inferior vena cava merging into the right atrium, okay, helping to confirm that we're not looking at the aorta, and in fact, it's the IVC going into the right atrium, okay, oftentimes the liver sitting right here in front of that as you're uh, imaging right above it. The depth should be able to stay the same, about 16 to 24 centimeters. And in this case, we said the IVC should be merging into the right atrium. 
and we're looking here for the size and respiratory variations of that okay we'll learn that this is where we can look at the inferior vena cava and assess fluid status whether a patient's fluid up or fluid down and whether we need to sometimes diurese take fluid off or give the patient fluid uh, to help uh, in their state so this could be a good uh, way of assessing fluid status at the bedside so hopefully this makes sense this is the subcostal inferior vena cava view you're pretty much looking for the inferior vena cava merging into the right atrium again you're going from the three o'clock position where we are in the subcostal four chamber view to the 12 o'clock position well that's the end of this lecture i hope you learned something now, just to keep you in mind uh, of our course material that we have available. So again, if you go to our website, www.ekg.md. Okay, so this is our website. And what you'll notice is that if you go to the EKG course here, okay, you'll find stuff that's separate. So notice that we have a number of topics, practice material, lectures, a way for you to contribute. And this is the course here over here so you'll notice we have over 300 videos or so and that's more on youtube there's another 100 more than 100 about 200 videos that are available with the course so those are separate videos and this course is really designed to take you from a beginner to advanced interpreter okay so completely separate from what you're getting online for free okay these are um, course material that comes with it so notice that you have a book okay and then you also have the pocket guide available so you can choose which format they are the same thing both these uh, book and the pocket guide uh, different formats uh, i really like this small one because you can keep it in your white coat if you're in the clinic or in your pocket and it's really available on the go now with the book you also get videos so notice these are the videos okay and these are a video for every single page in that book so it's over 30 hours of video now there's a number of practice material that i continue to upload there okay we'll have practice questions coming soon uh, so all of that's available again this is separate from all the free material that you get already okay so this is more high yield stuff this is what we used to teach our uh, technicians here and our students here at mayo clinic and it's used now among many institutions so use uh, check that out now what it also includes are calipers so yes you get calipers with this course okay um, I don't know anyone else that offers that but you do get calipers I think they're very helpful and they can uh, you know if you know how to use them correctly uh, can help to identify different uh, arrhythmias that are going on okay and then you also get our pocket EKG reference okay this was something we've put together as we were developing course for the fellows uh, and this is really nice it has every code as you saw earlier laid out there very small pocket guide available I had help with uh, my colleague Dr. Peter Noseworthy who's the head of the EKG lab here at Mayo Clinic in editing it so this is something that we use um, and we found very helpful so go to the ekg course you'll see examples of lectures okay why we developed this okay a lot of it came about from myself struggling with learning ekgs having a father that was an interventional cardiologist and you know still struggling so uh, my struggle is a struggle that i don't want you to have in learning them okay you can read all those introductory books but honestly they are not uh, enough okay and you find yourself using other resources which is part of the learning process i wanted to expedite that process for you and make it less uh, inefficient uh, in pretty much what i struggled with going and learning through ekg so again from beginner to advanced level with this course uh, you get the book the calipers the coding reference video access okay and now we're offering 25 percent off 25% off put that code in on checkout and uh, you'll have yourself 25% um, off that will even it's pretty much covers the cost of what we use to print the material so uh, we don't really make much off it it's more to help our learners grow and really be able to contribute to patient care that's why we do this and we love doing it so thank you so much for your support um, if you have any questions just leave them below and we're happy to answer them
All right. Have a great day.